in a panel that feeds all the circuits in the house. Copper conducts 60 hertz pretty well. Well, we're kind of like that. Again, I'll refer back to Touch for Health. The Asians have this documented over 10,000 years. They're called meridians. Kind of like your light switch circuit. In this room, in the walls, we have circuits in our body. Our skin is attached to everything through liquid, blood, lymph. And what conducts electricity? Liquid, minerals. In the house, it's metal, copper. In our body, it's colloid minerals. We are a broadband receptacle, as well as generator. Your thoughts create electricity. Your thoughts create current. Your thoughts create things. Our brain, our heart, is an electromagnetic generator. And just like putting your tester on your generator, you're picking up certain hertz by certain speeds. We can do the same thing. We have all kinds of tools. Some of them are here out in the lobby to measure our electrolysis. This device takes specific frequencies, like a depth finder, pings them against our skin, reads the response, and gives us data at very high speeds. So let's say we have a sniffle nose. Our nose is plugged, which is very common right now, especially in this part of the country with all the moisture. What's going on? How can my hand tell me what's going on with my nose? Well, because we have around 18,000 different potential problems to identify in our database, you put your hand on our device and we can tell you what's behind the sniffly nose, what's behind your headache, what's behind your incontinence, infant, uh, impotence, gut problems. Another claimer is we don't diagnose or treat. Heard that before, natural health industry claimer. We don't use the language. I don't know if that's me or not. Can you guys hear that noise? For lack of terminology, we do use some medical terms because we just don't have words. But for the most part, I'm not looking for diagnosis. Because the American Medical Association gives diagnosis with fancy words that really don't mean anything but describing a problem. I'm interested in what the problem is, not the description of it, with a fancy term. So, uh, if those interested in fancy words, I will disappoint you. So we have a sniffly nose. We have a headache. And now you put your hand in our device and now we tell you that you have a penicillium infection in your frontal left sinus cavity, because we have all the different left and right and all the different sinus cavities all have a specific frequency signature like our thumb. And then based on frequency, after we figure out what's going on, then there's a protocol developed based on frequency to balance it out. Literally like a scale. We figure out what's going on, and then we figure out what to do about it. 
we don't do symptomology anymore hardly at all only to keep your comfort level down while your body can, is actually healing. We don't treat your sinuses like we treat your sinuses like we were taught in naturopathic school or medical school that, oh boy, you have something going on with your nose, you need to get all kinds of stuff up your nose because there's a problem in your nose. We don't think that way anymore. We don't act that way anymore. Because a nose problem most definitely is a gut problem, which could be environmental or not. Again, touch for health. There's a lot of electronics going on right up here in our nose. Taste buds are electronic sensors. We're all the electronic sensors, all inside of our sinus cavity, in our oral cavity, our entire upper respiratory system, our auditory cavity, everything. These are all electrical sensors that we have in our biology. So for me, it only makes sense that this kind of technology works Even the food we eat. In my view, you should be eating for your electrical health first, then your biological health. The natural health industry, for the most part, doesn't even consider the electrical health. Another book, which I couldn't find before I came, Genie in Your Genes, Dawson Church, lays out our electrical system which we have a tangible biological electrical system separate from the central nervous system, your peripheral nervous system, your digestive system, your immune system. This is a totally different system. There's a few components. I'm pretty sure I can remember them. The, phospholip the phospholipid protein on the outside of your cells. The rod and cone cells in the back of your eyes the myelin sheath that covers your entire nervous system, the collagen-based tissue in your body. There's another book called The Rainbow and the Worm. It's a challenging read, interesting title though. She explains the intricacies of our biological computer that we call our body. We live in a high-speed internet network. Okay? A good example of this system is, have you ever hit your thumb with a hammer, drop something on your foot? Two responses happen. Immediately, you have a response that shoots through the electrical system to warn your brain, and then you have the nervous system impulse follow it. There's two separate actions that take place to get your brain to, to tell you that there's ow. Your, your central nervous system separate from your electrical system. Actually, the signal reaches your brain in the speed of light through the electrical system then the nervous system impulse is behind it because it travels much slower. It relies on neurotransmitters for that signal, the second signal. The first signal relies on a solidly sound functioning electrical system. And most people's electrical systems are not running very well. Actually, they're, quite, they're running quite bad because most people have neuropathy. They don't feel very well. The signal does not travel from your foot to your brain very fast. Actually, we have several brains in our body. Some people call them chakras. Candace Perth calls them chakras and likens them to seven different internal brains. Another book, highly recommended, Molecules of Emotion. Candace Perth. 